Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at a translation of financial statement. I'll work a comprehensive example showing you both the current and the temporal method. And this is part four of four. What does that mean? It means there are three prior parts before this section explaining the details. And I'll put the link in the description this way if you'd like to look at the lecture prior to this. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as in international accounting. In my international accounting course, I do have a few examples as well. You could also look at those. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. YouTube is where I host my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, finance and tax. These are all the courses that I cover. I don't only cover one course. I cover many courses. Check out my YouTube. Also on my website, it's not only I have the lectures on my website, I have additional resources, exercises, true, false, multiple choice. For example, the PowerPoint, uh, the exercises that I that I use, the exercise I'm, I'm going to be working with today will be available on my website. Please check it out. StudyPal.co is an artificial intelligence study buddy platform that will match you with a CPA or CFA candidate in your area. They're available in 85 countries, 2,500 cities if you are interested. Just one more time, the prerequisite, if you're interested in viewing the prior session, I'm going to put the prerequisite in the description. If, it not, if it's not, please email me, okay? But it should be there. Let's take a look at this example. And, you know, if you don't have access to my notes, if you don't have access to my website, you know, please copy the information down. The, this way you can follow. OK, on January 1st, 2012, P, a U.S. company acquired 100 percent of an Italian chocolate company. So a U.S. company acquiring an Italian company. It was determined that the fu functional currency is the euro. So they made it easy for us at the time of the combination. Uh, the Italian company's retained earnings was 150,000 euros. This is the begin beginning retained earnings of the chocolate Italian company. The Italian company has been um, has all been purchased at its incorporation. That's fine. January 12, 2010, and had a book value of 400,000, 70,000 non-monetary asset at the beginning of 2010. So the book value that we started with is 400,000 net monetary asset was $70,000 relevant exchange rate are listed below. The Italian company uses the FIFO method of inventory and it's ending inventory in both of 2011 and 2012 was purchased during the last quarter, which is makes sense. Because if you're using FIFO first and first out, it means the most recent inventory was purchased recently. And if, if you if we're talking at the end of 20, 12 at the beginning of 2012 it was bought at the end of 2011 and here are the exchange rate and uh, the italian company declared 40,000 of dividends september 1st and here's the date the information that we are giving we are giving the exchange rate on the date of acquisition the exchange rate at the beginning of the year in question the exchange rate i believe this is for the dividend the exchange rate at the end of the year in question the average rate for the whole year, which is we're going to see how we're going to be using those different rates. Where do we use them? If you don't know where to use them, just stop right now and go to those prerequisites. I'm going to show you. But the point is, if you're not sure, like, why are they giving us all these rates? The average for the three months ended uh, 2012 and the average for the last three months of 2011. You'll see how we will use those. So again, if you don't have the information, you can access it through my website or Take note, take a picture of it, whatever you have to do. And this is the trial balance in euros in, in the in the Italian currency. Well, obviously, it's the euros. It's no, no more the lira. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at sales of 280,000, cost of goods sold of 100,000, depreciation expense of 20,000, other expenses of 80, income tax of 30,000. They made a profit in euros of $50,000. The beginning retained earning, as we said, is 150. Net income plus beginning retained earnings gives us 200,000 minus minus the dividend gives us ending retained earnings. Now, ending retained earnings will go to the balance sheet. Then on the balance sheet, they have 30,000 in euros, 50,000 in receivable, 20,000 in inventory, land, building, equipment, total asset 580. They have liabilities, accounts payable, bonds payable, common stock, additional paid in capital, retained earning of 160. All in all, Assets equal liabilities plus plus equity. Here we have a translation adjustment, which we're going to be working with shortly. OK, that is that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is is to actually 
work this exercise and to work this exercise i like to use excel i can write on the screen but excel it's cleaner i want to make sure you understand where everything is coming from so the first method we're going to be using to translate and by the way this excel sheet would also be available on my website so the first thing you um we're going to work is the current method so it's very important to understand how we translate the current method well with the current method, we'll start with the income statement. You might be saying, well, isn't that normal? We start with the income statement. Well, you're going to see when we use the temporal method, we don't, we don't start with the income statement. Let's walk through it, though. Again, if you feel I'm not going over specific information, the reason is because I already went in the prior session, just in case. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and translate the income statement. That's the first thing we're going to do. Well, how do we translate the income statement? Simply put, what I'm asking you is which of these rates on the right hand side right here, I'm highlighting back and forth, which of these rates are we going to be using? Well, to be 100% accurate, to be 100% accurate, none of these rates will be used because revenues and expenses, they, they will need to be translated at the transaction date. So if they took place uh, uh, April the 2nd uh, at 11 o'clock, we need to know what was the euro at April the 2nd, 11 o'clock. What was that sale for? If the sale took place on uh, January 6th, what was the euro on January 6th? But we can do that because we can do that for the income statement. But we assume, we assume that transaction takes place throughout the year. Therefore, for the income statement, we're going to be using the average rate. Again, the, the reason we use the average rate is because it is not practical for companies to keep track of the transaction constantly. So for this, I'm going to put capital A here for the inc for the revenues and for the expenses. Let me just A and drag it. A means I'm going to be using the average rate for 2012. And the average rate for 2012 is 1.1106. That's the rate. So I'm going to go ahead and translate. Oops, sorry. Should be the same. So it's this rate I'm going to be using equal sign. I'm just using formulas. Okay, so this is the rate I'm going to be using for the income statement accounts. So simply put, I'm going to take the euro, multiply it by the rate, the US dollar average rate. It's going to give me my revenue in US dollar. And this is, I'm going to drag the formula down. Let me just change the format. So it looks a little bit, little bit better number number you separator no decimal negatives okay so so now net income now if i can just get net income now i'm gonna copy the formula from here so net income is fifty five thousand five thirty fifty five thousand five thirty again what we're using again just it's the average it's the average we're using the average rate okay so we're up to this point the next thing we're going to do is we're going to translate we're going to translate retained earnings remember let me just now now we're moving into a new territory in a sense now we're we're, we're, we're leaving the income statement we completed the income statement now we're going to be looking at retained earnings Reta starting retained earnings is 150. well for retained earnings we're going to go back to the rate at the beginning of the year the rate at the beginning of the year the rate at the beginning of the year is 104 1.045 um, 1.04512 so simply put i'm going to trend i'm going to bring this right here this is the rate that i will translate translate my retained earning at so i'm going to translate retained earnings i'll take 150 times the rate so i'm going to be using the rate on Simply put, the rate will be on one one. The rate on one one. One. Let me just make sure this will show. One dash one. Okay, one one. That's the rate. One fifty six. Now, my net income, fifty five thousand five thirty plus my retained earning translated will give me two twelve two ninety five. Then I'm gonna then gonna translate my dividend. Again, my dividend. Um, the dividend was on a specific date. The dividend was. 9 1. Well, I do have, you have to translate the dividend on that date because it's a one transaction. I have a specific date. Therefore, the date when I declared the dividend, it was 1.572. The rate was 1.572. I'm going to translate my dividend at that rate. And my dividend is, let me see, 
1.15 sorry I have this rate incorrect the rate is 1.1.1 five seven two that's the rate okay so the rate is that so let me just take the forty thousand the dividend in euros translated into us dollar and now i'm gonna get ending retained earning which is 212 295 minus e12 and that's gonna give me my plus actually because it's a minus already so the difference between okay so it's going to give me my ending retained earnings so my ending retained earnings let me just make sure this looks more a little bit more like a financial statement so this way you know where we are once we do some computation give me one second please so here I'm just gonna double underline here double underline here and I will underline here it's not a big deal but just so this way you're not you're not overwhelmed and let me change the format of these numbers so now what we did is we find net income and the statement of retained earnings in US dollar okay which method are we using the current method so hopefully you were able to follow what did we use which rate for what purpose now once again if you're not sure where the rates are coming from why are we using those rates again go back to the lectures but hopefully you followed so this is the rate on nine one this is the rate on nine one now well we're gonna go now to the balance sheet and here's what's gonna happen so once you're done with the income statement and retained earning under the current method you go to the balance sheet under the balance sheet we're using the current rate therefore on the balance sheet the balance sheet is 1231 kind of I know it's obvious but let me put it there 1231 2012 the balance sheet we're gonna be using for most of it the current rate C is the current rate okay C. we're going to be using C, the current rate now what is the current rate on 1231 the current rate is right here the current rate is 1.1762 that's the current rate okay now I'm gonna go ahead and pull my current rate so I can translate my financial statements okay 1.1762 these are all on the based on the current rate again because because we are using the current method so that's why it's e kind of we can we can we can say so so basically I'm gonna take my cash multiplied by the current rate and hopefully it makes sense yes the cash will be translated to the current rate as well as all the other assets let me figure out the um, change the format this way I have the numbers they look a little better and here's what I have now I'm gonna add my total asset I'm just gonna copy this formula adding my total asset my total assets is 682,196 once you get to this point this number is important this number is important you will see why in a moment so I know my assets are 682,196 now I'm gonna do the same thing for my liabilities my liabilities also will be translated at the current rate so I'm gonna take I'm gonna use the same rate I'm going to use in the same rate so I'm going to take this 30,000 times this figure 140 times this figure so that's my liabilities you know what matter of fact I'm going to do one I'm going to go a step further and what you should do at this point if I was in your shoes I'm going to take my assets and subtract my liabilities subtract my liabilities and this is going to give me my equity if you hear if you hear footsteps it's my son my three-year-old son running okay so okay so my equity should be my total equity should be okay um, 482 242 just 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 keep that on the side okay you, you'll see how I'm gonna be using this okay so because I have more, all my assets all my liabilities now I'm gonna translate my common stock additional paid in capital okay I'm gonna translate those okay for one thing I have retained earning let me bring down retained earning retained earning is 166 10 so notice retained earning is coming from up there so I'm done with retained earning so I'm gonna translate my common stock and additional paid in capital at what rate you will translate those at the rate of the when you bought the company at the rate that you when you bought the company when you bought the company January 1st 2012 this was the rate so you're gonna be using that rate for those two at what rate at the when you acquired the company okay so this is gonna be 
the same for both okay this is the rate now I'm gonna translate I'm gonna go ahead and take 200,000 times the rate 50,000 times the rate let me change this to decimals so this way just, just format okay okay I changed it okay now I have my assets and my liabilities now my I already computed my li I'm sorry I already computed my assets I already computed my liabilities and I find out my equity should be that much let me add up my equity so I'm gonna add up my equity and see how much my equity is equal to so I'm gonna add up my equity Matter of fact, I'm just going to highlight it and it's going to give me the sum. It's not showing. Okay, let me just add my equity. So if I take this number plus this number plus this number, my equity is 427,290. This is my equity. But my equity should be this number in red, 482,242. What does that mean? What's the difference? I am missing, I am missing from equity 54,952. Well, what is that 54,952? Guess what? That 54,952 is my, what we called translation adjustment. Translation adjustment. Let me just double check the number. 35,286, 164, 668, 209. This is 209. It should be 209. This is rounding a little bit. That's fine. Uh, okay, that's fine. Simply put, Simply put, what I'm missing is this translation adjustment. This is cumulative translation adjustment. So the adjustment goes on the balance sheet. Okay, this adjustment. Now, if I add, I'm going to add them manually, my liabilities, all my liabilities. Watch, I'm going to add all my liabilities. I'm, gonna, I'm adding all the liabilities, then equity, then my adjustment, which is E28, E28. It should equal to my total assets. So notice here, now my liabilities and equities this is liabilities plus equity that's equal to total assets 682196 and so simply put simply put what i did is i figured out my net income first i figured out my retained earning and whatever is needed and whatever was needed let me let me be let me be specific with you that was needed it's right here let me just have a draw that's that's the number that was needed that's the number that that I needed to add to my equity to come up with 682196 so my equity should be this much okay I needed 54952 as a result once I do so my total assets my total assets right here will equal to total let me put liabilities and equity here would equal to would equal to total liabilities and equities okay so so basically this is what we did this is the current this is the current method now the question is is there another way to verify the translation adjustment using the current method yes there is another way to verify the um, the adjustment how do we verify the adjustments let me show you it's not a shortcut it's basically it's a proof and hopefully you will understand it but let's I did not put the number down let me put it down At the beginning asset net asset remember that was given in the problem was 400,000 400,000 then what's gonna what's gonna affect what's gonna affect net asset net income so net income was net income was in euros 50,000 plus 50,000 the dividend we paid dividend of 40,000 dividend of 40,000 so our our exposed net asset position exposed asset position um at year end was 410 410 basically how it's 410 beginning beginning asset position which is beginning equity plus net income minus dividend i did plus because it's a minus will give us 410 so far so good now here's what's going to happen i am going to go ahead and translate basically what does it mean translate basically I'm gonna go ahead and it basically it, translate basically uh, translate the financial statements based on the appropriate rate okay my exposed position when I when I started the year the rate was 1.0452 so the translation rate for this number is 
1.04512. Why? It's the beginning of the year. This is 1 1. So this number will translate into US dollar when I, the date 1 1 when I bought this company will translate to 418. Let me just change the format here for all these numbers. Okay. All right. Okay, 418. 418. Now, I have to also translate my net income. Remember, net income, you would use the average rate because net income took place throughout the year, 1106. So, what's the... Let me just cut, cut work the formulas. Average 2012, 1106. So, this number, the 50,000, will be translated at 1.1106. And the dividend will be translated based on the dividend rate. Let me just get the dividend rate from here. One, okay. So dividend rate is forty thousand times. Whoops, the forty thousand times this rate. So all in all, let me just kind of copy and paste here. Net beginning asset position plus 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 net income minus dividend gives me this number. Well. If it, if it gave me this number, let's see what's the uh, 427, okay? But, no, let me see, let me see. Okay, let's do it one more time. Beginning, beginning asset, beginning asset, asset position, plus, plus net income minus dividend. The reason I'm putting plus because the number is negative. It's 427,290, 427,290. Well, if I translate my asset 12 12 asset if i translate it based on 12 12 31 means 12 12 31 is 12 12 no, 12 31 2012 1.1762 so if i translate this position let me first put the rate at 1.1762 i will come up with I'll come up with 482.242. Well, what does that mean? It means when I went through the the uh, when I went and I translated everything at the appropriate appropriate rate, beginning inventory, uh, beginning net asset at the appropriate rate, net income at the average rate, and dividend at at the dividend rate, I came up with at net asset position 427.290. Now, hold on a second, but if I take my net asset position at 1231, which is 410, and I translate it at 1231, which is 1.1762, I come up with, let me change my pen here, I come up with 482.242. Well, how much am I missing? Well, let's find the difference between them. How much am I missing? 54, 952. 54, 952. 54, 952. That's the adjustment. So simply put, this will confirm, will confirm, will confirm your adjustment. This is what we're talking about. So what you do is you complete, if you can complete this, you would say, yes, my cumulative uh, uh, my cumulative translation is 54,952. Then you can go back and just double check. So this way, just to double check yourself, that's basically what it is. This is all what I did here is to kind of verification. It's a verification process of the translation adjustment. Because think about it, what changes, what affect the asset position, net asset position? What affect equity, income, and dividend? So if we translate income and dividend, if we take beginning retained earning at the beginning rate, translate income and dividend, income on average the dividend on that specific date and we translate the ending at the ending rate well guess what anything that's missing it's a plug and this is what we find out it's the plug so this is basically this method was the current method now we're going to work the same example using the temporal method i have the temporal method here using the same using the same exact data however this company uses the temporal method now you might be saying why the temporal why the current method if you're interested go back and view the lecture why we use one method over the other under what circumstances one method is better than the other and uh, and you will find out why if you have any questions obviously you could always email me now under the temporal method let me change this under the temporal method 
under the temporal method, guess what? We're going to be starting with the adjustment of balance sheet. Hold on a second. Why am I starting with the balance sheet? You're going to find out why. So rather than starting with the income statement, rather than starting with the income statement, notice we start with the income statement. Now we're going to start with the balance sheet and you will know why in a moment. So here's what's going to happen. Monetary assets, which is cash, receivable, inventory, they're going to be converted at the current rate. What's the current rate? The current rate is the rate on 1231. What's the current rate? December th December uh, 31st, 2020, 2012, the rate was 1.1762. So those will be translated at the current rate. So, whoops. I can't just drop the, drag the formula. So let me translate those. I'm going to take this number, multiply it by this number. Okay. So those are... Um, uh, assets, uh, uh, the monetary assets. Let me just ch change the format for everything so it's be easier with the numbers. Okay, now um, land. Land will be based on the historical rate, um, based on the historical historical rate. Okay, Wh when we bought it. Now, to be more specific, if we can find out exactly when we bought it, it will even be better. But now all we have is when we bought the company itself. So we're going to be using that rate. But it's better if you know the rate that you bought that company, you, the rate that you bought that company. When, I'm sorry, the rate when the company bought the asset specifically. Okay, since we don't have this information, we're going to go with the date that we purchased the company. Historical rate. Okay, now we're going to go and translate those, those three assets. Okay, now we're going to compute total assets. I'm just going to copy the formula. 612, uh, two, uh, 278. Let me just double check. 35,286, 58, 810, 23. Okay, it's fine. 23, 104, 510, 209, and 188, 100. Okay, so all in all, Total asset is 619,278. Now this number, once again, this number is important. This number is important. And the reason it's important, because it's going to help us kind of, once you have total assets, you could figure out total liabilities. The rest will be a plug-in. So you're going to see why this number is important. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for current, for current liabilities. Liabilities, which are financial liabilities, they are also translated at the current rate. And what's the current rate? 1.1762. 1.1762. So let's go ahead and make the translation here. Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to keep on going. We're going to keep on going. Now we're going to we're going to translate common stock. Common stock is the acquisition date. The on the acquisition date, the rate was 1.04512 additional paid in capital, which is the same thing as common stock, 1.040512, translate them at that rate, okay, translate them at that rate, okay, now what's left is retained earnings, okay, now here's what we know, we know that our total assets are 6, you know, our total assets 619278, okay, assets, Remember, assets minus liabilities. Assets, if we take total assets, which we know what the number is, 619, we know, if we know, I have the formula here, I know total assets minus, um, minus liabilities, minus liabilities, equal to 419,324. This should be my equity. This should be my equity, because assets minus liabilities equal to equity. Let's see how much my equity is right now. What's my equity? My equity is common stock plus, uh, it's not common stock, common stock is E13, common stock plus additional paid in capital. Well, if I look at my equity, I look at my equity, let me see. So, okay, if I look at my equity, my equity should be 419,324, but it's 261,280. So I'm missing. I'm missing 158.044. Guess what? The number that you are missing, that's your retained earnings. So what you did in this problem, retained earning was a plug. This is the number that's missing to make everything equal to 619.287. So 158.044, this is retained earning, which is a plug. Now I'm going to add my liabilities, accounts payable, plus bonds payable, plus 
common stock plus additional paid in capital plus my plug of retained earnings will give me 618 619 to 78 which is equal to the asset so what we did here retained earning this was the plug this is the plug and this is what's going to help me prepare the other thing so this was the plug okay let me just highlight it in a different color okay this was the plug 158.044 okay now keep that number and well before we keep that number in mind this is going to be so my ending retained earning 158 my ending retained earning 158.044 just do it one more time my ending retained earning okay 158.044 so I can just bring this down to ending retained earning and it's now it's working okay so this is my ending retained earnings I know this much okay now I'm gonna translate my my income statement I'm gonna be using the average average rate for sales the average rate is for 2012 is 1.1106 again we cannot keep track of every transaction on a regular basis therefore we use the average now I'm gonna translate cost of goods sold now cost of goods sold under the temporal method we cannot just take cost of goods sold and multiply it by by the uh, by the average rate cost of goods sold remember the formula for cost of goods sold cost of goods sold equal beginning inventory cost of goods sold is beginning inventory plus purchases less ending inventory is cost of goods sold so simply put cost of goods sold is composed of three component beginning inventory purchases and ending inventory well the beginning inventory the beginning inventory this is basically this inventory was purchased during the third I'm sorry not third fourth this inventory was purchased fourth quarter 2011 okay because we're looking at 2012 we said the inventory was purchased in 20 at the, at the during the last quarter purchases are bought throughout the year throughout the year and the year is 2012 therefore we're going to be using the average rate here we're going to be using the average rate here the, the beginning inventory we're going to be using the average rate for the fourth quarter and ending inventory those were purchased fourth quarter 2012 therefore we use the the other rate so notice we're going to be using three different rates to convert to convert uh, to convert uh, to compute cost of goods sold first of all the beginning the the uh, average last three months of let me just first because we can't see this let me just see which not which one is 11 which one is 12 okay so the beginning inventory will be translated at the average for the last three months of 2011 okay because it was bought in 2011 therefore the USD equivalent is 15,000 at three hundred thirty four dollars and fifty fifty cent that's the beginning inventory it's translated at that rate then we have to use the average rate for the purchases because we assume the purchases are done throughout the year the average rate for 2012 is 1.1106 so let me translate that that's us dollar and the ending inventory is translated at translated at the average rate for the last three months of 2012 1.1667 so let me so let me do this and we'll do the same thing again we're going to take beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending it's going to give us cost of goods sold in us number which is 108 613.50 so i'm going to go up here and i'm going to bring that number from here so i have to prepare a schedule 108 615.30 uh, it's rounded that's fine now I'm gonna go ahead and compute the remainder I'm gonna compute depreciation depreciation I'm gonna I'm not gonna be using the average I'm gonna be using the historical cost once again the historical cost is not 100% accurate the reason is the reason is um, the reason is uh, the reason is you want to know when the, when the when the asset was purchased but we don't have this information but we're gonna be using the historical for our purposes one point So the the for depreciation expense we're going to be using that rate. I was saying depreciation expense should be translated at historical rate, but again the most accurate thing is to have the rate on that date, the rate on um, the rate on that date in a sense 
when the asset was purchased, but we don't have this information. Other expenses, they're going to be, we're going to be using the average rate because we cannot keep track of those expenses on a daily basis. Income tax would also use the average rate and the average rate was 1.1106. So let me go ahead and multiply this. Multiply this and it's 33,000. Now let me compute net income. Let's, here's what's going to happen. If I take, uh, well, let me just copy the formula from here. If I take sales minus expenses, it's showing me my net income is 59,286. That's not correct. I just want, I just want to tell you this, but I just, I computed this on purpose. Now, what do we know? Here's what we know. We know, we know beginning retained earning 150. We know the rate that we're going to translate it at is the one, one rate, which is, we're going to translate beginning retained earnings at January 1st rate. So this is. So now we're preparing the statement of retained earnings. So this is the statement of retained earnings right here. So beginning retained earnings. Um, so if we take beginning retained earnings plus net income, we have 216.054. Then the dividend, the dividend was declared on 9.1. So we know the rate on 9.1, 1.572, 1. I'm sorry, 1.1572. Again, this is a mistake here. 1. Point, okay, 1. 1.1572. So if I take 40,000 times the rate, that's going to give me 46,288. Now here's what's going to happen. Let's see if this is equal to 158. Remember, retained ending retained earning is correct. Now, if I take, watch, if I take net income, which is that's not the correct net income, if I take 59,286, let me just do it. Let me do it here. If I take, I'm going to do this computation on the side, net income that I computed plus my beginning retained earning minus my dividend, it gives me 262 minus my dividend. I'm going to put it as a plus because it's a minus. It gave me 169,766. So if I use this figure, if I use this net income, this is my ending retained earning. That's not correct. My ending retained earning should be this much. Well, if it's this much, what am I missing? Well, if it should be this much, what's the difference between this? 169,766 based on my incorrect income and this ending retained earning, there's a 17,723. I need to reduce my income. I need to reduce my income by, by 11,723. Let's, let me show you what's going to happen. So I'm going to now book my, this is the most important, and not the most important, but this is the entry that I'm looking to do. I'm going to put here, I'm going to put here a loss. I'm going to put here a loss of 11,766. Now this is not going to work because it's, it's a circular. So let me just delete this. I'm going to put minus 11,723. So simply put, I am going to use this number, the difference, to reduce it by 11,000. Now my net income is 47,000. My net income now, my correct net income is 47,563. My beginning retained earning is correct. Those are equal to 204,332 minus the dividend gives me my correct retained earning. So my adjustment was, my translation adjustment was a loss of 11,000. 723 11723 let one more time let's walk through this adjustment how did we come up with this adjustment what did we do first okay let me walk you through it one more time first we find my total assets then we we find my total liabilities and equities without retained earnings then we find out retained earnings should be 158.044 so we took retained earning and we brought it down here then we prepare a tentative income statement all the way up until the translation. Then we said, okay, let's work with our current net income, which was a different net income than this one, which is f around 59,000. We took the incorrect net income plus the, retain plus the correct retained earning beginning minus the correct dividend. It gave us something other than 158,044. We found the difference and we find out we need to reduce our net income by 11,723 to come up with 158,044. So hopefully you were able to follow. Otherwise, view the recording again. If you have access to the Excel, just go in there and start to play with the Excel. Hopefully it will make more sense.
Again, if you want to access this Excel as well as additional exercises, true, false, multiple choice about this topic, visit my website, farhatlectures.com, where I have many, many more resources and many, many more courses. Study hard, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. Good luck. Share the videos, subscribe, and stay motivated.